Good morning class. So today we will be moving on to the individual meridians and what we will be doing is going into detail on each of the 12 main meridians, starting with the lung meridian. And how the layout will work is that we will start with a brief introduction into the meridian, we will then go through the pathway through which the meridian flows, and then finally we'll move on to each of the individual points on the meridian, going into details such as the location, the indication, and how we need all the points. So now let's look at the general information on this meridian. So this meridian's full name is the Lung Meridian of the Hand Tai-Yin. So remember, this gives us a lot of information about this meridian. And the reason why is because all meridians have an intrinsic relationship with their associated organ, and they also can be used to treat conditions along the pathway through which the meridian flows. So if we look at this name here, the lung meridian of the hand tie-in, firstly, if we go through this part, the lung meridian, that tells us that this meridian is linked with the lung, and therefore it can treat conditions associated with the lung. Secondly, it tells us that this meridian is on the hand, and then tie-in tells us that it's a yin meridian, and the tie part tells us that it's the most yin of all three meridians. And then also from this information, we can get even more detail. So if you think back to your introduction lectures, do you remember which side of the arm the yin meridians flow on? So these meridians flow on the medial aspect of the arm. So we already know that this meridian will be on the medial aspect of the arm. So if we think back to the three types of yin meridians, the tai-yin, the shao-yin, and the ju-yin, of these three meridian types, the tai-yin, we know that this one runs the most anterior of the three. So it's going to be the anterior and medial aspect of the arm. So just from this information, we can get a good idea of where the meridian flows. And then finally, the final thing you need to note is which is the partner to the lung meridian. So if you think back to the interior-exterior relationship of the meridians, which meridian is linked with the lung meridian? So this is the large intestine meridian. So that's also going to assist you in understanding some of the functions of this meridian. So now let's move on. So this meridian actually has 11 points in total. And the common indications of the points are diseases related to the lung. So this is diseases such as coughing, tachypnea, coughing blood, and sore throat. It can also be used for other diseases related to the distribution location of the meridian. So that means that it can be used for disorders along which the meridian flows. So that's why it's important to know the theory that we talked about in the introduction lecture, as in just from the name of the meridian, you can really know where it runs, and therefore you know what conditions it can treat. So next we're going to look at the course of the meridian. So firstly, before we go into this slide, I want you to note a few things. So you see the image on the right over here. This image shows you the pathway that the meridian flows. There's two important parts you need to note here. One, the dotted line and the solid line. So the solid line represents the actual path where the meridian flows. And then the dotted line represents one of two things. So firstly, it can represent when the meridian moves more interiorly, or it will represent a branch off of the main meridian. And then if you look at the animation, you can see that it further differentiates between these two aspects of the meridians by making the dotted lines in blue, and the main meridian in red. And then each of these little dots on the main meridian are one of the acupuncture points that we'll go into detail in a little bit later in the lecture. So now let's go into detail on where this meridian flows. So this meridian originates in the middle energizer. That's this region over here. And then it descends down to connect with the large intestine. And remember in the previous slide, we talked about the large intestine is the linked partner of the lung. So that's why it descends like this to the large intestine. Then from there, it winds back up. As you can see here, it winds back up and continues ascending through the upper orifice of the stomach all the way to the lungs, where, as you can see over here, it connects to both lungs. And then one thing to note here, the dotted line in this case represents where the meridian is more interior, and that's why it's connecting to both the organs. So the meridians usually go more interiorly, especially in the abdomen, especially when they want to connect to one of the organs. And then if we continue from the lungs, it will continue ascending up and then move laterally 
towards the shoulders over here and the first point is lung one over here and that's just medial to the shoulder it then ascends a little bit to lung two and then from there it descends the shoulder along the anterior and radial aspects all the way down the upper arm to the cubital fossa over here and then it continues descending remaining on the anterior and radial aspect until it gets to the wrist crease over here then it continues descending past the thena eminence all the way down to the radial aspect of the tip of the thumb which is also lung 11 and that's over here and then this slide shows the major branches of this meridian so there is only one major branch of this meridian and that branch occurs at lung 7 where the branch diverges from the main meridian and runs along the dorsal aspect of the hand as you can see over here and then runs all the way down the dorsal aspect onto the radial aspect of the index finger over here and continues descending all the way down to large intestine 1 over here and one thing to note here is that all the meridians connect to the next meridian in the series and we talked about this in the introduction lectures where we talked about the psychical flow of all the meridians remember that we said that the yin meridians on the hand connect with the yang meridians at the tips of the fingers and then the yang meridians would then flow up from the tip of the finger to the head over here where they would connect with the other yang meridian of the foot which would then run down to the foot which would then connect to the yin meridian on the foot and then that meridian would run back up to the chest and connect with the next yin meridian of the hand going down the arm and that was that cyclical flow we talked about this slide here shows the frequently used points so what we're referring to when we talk about frequently used points are points that we use more often in clinical practice and this can be for a number of reasons firstly they are special points so do you remember any of the special point categories that we talked about in the introduction lectures these are the points such as the yuan source points the Luau connecting points the five shoe points etc and then the second reason they can be used is because they are found more effective in clinical practice so over years and years of clinical practice the practitioners might have found these points to be more effective than other points and thus they become a frequently used point and then i also want you to note here that how we choose points is that we always try when selecting points is to select as few points as possible so that we cause as little discomfort to the patient as well as improving the effects of the treatment as the fewer points we use the more effective the treatment would be and one way we differentiate and choose which points we want to use is that we try and use points that serve multiple purposes so if a point is both on the affected meridian and is a yuan source point so it can treat the affected organ we'd prefer this point than just another point which is only on the meridian or if we're treating acute disease and therefore we can use a point on the affected organ but also a she cleft point as these points are more effective in treating acute diseases so that's why we like to choose points that serve multiple purposes and thus can reduce the amount of points we need to use and then the frequently used points on the lung meridian are lung one zhong fu lung five chi tzu lung seven liu q lung nine tai yuan and lung 11 xiao shang so now we're going to move on to the first point of the meridian so yeah there are a few things i want you to note before we go into detail firstly the name here at the top starts with the chinese name and then secondly we have the english abbreviation for the name so this is the abbreviation for lung one but most of the time when people talk about the points or when you see it in text it'll be abbreviated as lu1 so all the lung points will have lu and then the number corresponding to the order that they are found in on the meridian and then if it is any type of special point then i'll put that underneath the name after that will be the location then the indications and then finally the needling technique and then in the little star here at the end this is any caution or care that you need to take with the point and then on the right is an image of the point so you can get an idea of where about the point is also yeah i want you to make sure that you don't use the image only okay these images are only a guide always refer to the textbook or this location over here as sometimes the images aren't 100% accurate so 
I don't want you to use them as your reference material. Rather refer to the notes or our class material or the textbook. So the first point is Chongfu Lang Wan. So this point is a alarm point, also known as a front move point of the lung. And can anyone remember what the function of the front move points are? So the front move points are the points where the chi of the corresponding organ infuses. And what this means is that the chi in these points is much more active and can be much more effective in treating disorders of the organ. So that means that this point will be much more effective in treating any type of disorder of the actual organ. So that could be conditions such as lung chi deficiency or lung heat, any type of disorder that affects the lung. And then the location of this point. So this point is located six sun lateral to the midline of the chest. So the midline here, we take the midline and we're going to go six sun lateral. And then it's in the first intercostal space. So you're going to count to the first intercostal space over here. And one nice marker to help you locate this point is it's just medial to the coracoid process. So the coracoid process is about here. And if you don't know what the coracoid process is, see this image here on the bottom right I've just brought in. This is highlighting the coracoid process in red over here. And it's a little bony prominence that comes off the scapula. And it's normally palpable in this region on a patient. Uh, usually about right about there. So we're going to be just medial to that. And then the indications for this point. So as I mentioned, it can be used for disorders of the lung. So that's why it can be used for symptoms such as cough, tachypnea, chest pain, and any other cardiopulmonary diseases. And then because of its location, it can also be used for shoulder pain as it's a local point for the shoulder. And then finally, it can be used for back pain. And then finally, we're going to look at how we would needle this point. So our needle direction is going to be horizontal oblique insertion. So if you can't remember what oblique insertion refers to, then I would suggest going back to the slides on needling technique where I explain this in more detail. And then it's 0.5 to 0.8 sun laterally. So that's in this direction. So what horizontal oblique insertion refers to is if this is the skin surface here, and if this is a perpendicular insertion, this is an oblique insertion, and then this is a horizontal insertion. What a horizontal oblique insertion means is it's midway between oblique and horizontal. So it's about this direction. And then finally, care needs to be taken not to insert the needle perpendicularly or in an oblique insertion towards the medial aspect as needling in both these directions carries the risk of puncturing the lungs as the lungs are situated in this region here. The next point is Yunmen, lung 2. So this point is located on the lateral superior aspect of the chest. So what this means is it's lateral and superior part of the chest. That's this part here. And it is also just superior to the coracoid process, which from our previous slide we know is over here. So it's going to be just superior to that. And it's in the depression of the infraclavicular fossa. So infraclavicular fossa means it's below the clavicle. And this fossa is easily seen when you ask the patient to lift up their arm, especially in thin patients. You'll see a little depression forming in this region, and it's in that depression. And this is also around 6 sun lateral to the midline. The indications for this point are similar to that of the previous point because of its location. So it can be used for cough, tachypnea, chest pain, and other lung diseases. And then it can also be used for shoulder pain as it's local to the shoulder region. How we would needle this point? is it's going to be the same as the previous point, a horizontal oblique insertion, 0.5 to 0.8 sun laterally, which remember is in this direction. And then it has the same caution because it's very close to the previous point. It has the caution of not needling perpendicularly or oblique in a medial direction as both of those have the risk of puncturing the lungs and causing pneumothorax. The next point is known as Tianfu, lung 3. So this point is located on the radial border of the biceps brachii. This is the radial and this is the ulnar side of the arm. And then we've got to be radial of the biceps brachii, which is this muscle here, highlighted over here. And it's three tsun below the end of the anterior axillary crease. So 
he has the anterior axillary crease. And then if you remember from your point location lectures, so from the anterior axillary line to the cubital crease is nine turn. So then this point is three turn or one third of this distance from here to here. And then the indications for this point, it can be used for cough, tachypnea, epistaxis, and other lung diseases. Then secondly, it can be used for goiter. And finally, because of its location, it can be used for pain of the upper arm. And how we needle this point is we do a perpendicular insertion, 0.5 to 1 sun. The next point is Shia Bai. This is known as Lung 4. So this point is also located on the radial border of the biceps brachii. So remember, here's the biceps brachii. We're on its radial border. And then it should be 4 sun. So Lung 3 was 3 sun over here. We're now 4 sun below. Or it can be 5 sun above the cubital crease or 4 sun below the anterior auxiliary fold. That will be in the same place. This point can be used for cough, tachypnea, retching and other lung diseases. And then also because it's also a local point of the upper arm, it can be used for pain of the upper arm. The insertion is the same as lung 3. It's perpendicular insertion, 0.5 to 1 sun. So the next point we're going to look at is chitza, lung 5. So this point is a hersey and water point of the meridian and it's located on the cubital crease of the elbow. So that's this region over here. And then it's in the depression on the radial side of the tendon of the biceps brachii. So here's the biceps brachii. And then if we look at this zoomed in image here on the left, this is the tendon of the biceps brachii here. And we've got to be on the radial side. So the radial side refers to this side where the radius is. Whereas the ulna sign would be on the side where the ulna bone is, which is over here. And then the indications for this point, it can be used for cough, tachypnea, hemoptysis, sore throat, and other lung heat syndromes. And then because of its local position, it can be used for elbow pain. It can also be used for acute vomiting and diarrhea, sunstroke, and infantile convulsions. Our insertion is perpendicular, 0.8 to 1.2 tun. Or we can pick this point to cause bleeding. And then one thing to note here is that this point is used for lung heat syndromes, but it could also be used for any type of heat in the body. So it's more effective for lung heat because it's a point on the lung meridian, but it can also be used for other types of heat. And then secondly, if you think back to the different types of insertions, which type of insertion do you think we could use here to help protect the biceps brachii tendon and ensure that we do not needle inserts? So this would be the fingernail pressing insertion. And we put the thumb of the palpating hand or the index finger of the palpating hand over here to protect the biceps brachii. And then we could insert without having to worry about if we were going to damage the biceps brachii tendon when we inserted our needle. The next point is Kong Zui. This is Lung 6. So this point is the Shi cleft point of the meridian. And this point is located 7 sun above the transverse wrist crease. So this is the transverse wrist crease over here. And we've got to go 7 sun above this. And then does anyone remember the distance from the transverse wrist crease to the cubital crease? So this distance is 12 sun. So we could say 7 sun above the transverse wrist crease, or it could also be 5 sun below the cubital crease. And so that gives us our longitudinal measurement. Now we need our transverse measurement. So where along from year to year this point is located. And how we locate this point is we actually use Lung 5, Yang Shi, and we use Lung 9, Tai Yuan, as our markers. And this point is on the line connecting Lung 5, which is over here, and Lung 9 down here. And then we draw a line to connect the two. And this point is on that line. The uses of this point. So firstly, because this point is a Xi cleft point, can anyone remember the functions of the Xi cleft points? So the Xi cleft points are all used for acute conditions. So what this means is that this point can be used for hemoptysis, but particularly we're referring to acute and severe hemoptysis. It then can also be used for cough, tachypnea, sore throat and other lung diseases. And finally, because of its location, it can be used for spasmodic pain of the elbow and arm. Our insertion is perpendicular 0.5 to 1.5 turn. 
10, and the next point we're going to look at is Li Chie Lang 7. So this point is a Luau connecting point and a confluent point of the Rin Meridian. And then this point also falls into two other categories. Firstly, it's one of Madan Yang's heavenly star points. So what Madan Yang heavenly star points are, is it's a grouping of 12 points by the ancient great physician Madan Yang of the Jin Dynasty. And what he did is he selected 12 points which he thought were the most important. And he listed this point specifically effective for one-sided headaches, when painful obstruction and numbness of the whole body, obstruction of phlegm in the upper body, and locked jaw. And then the second category I was talking about is known as the four command points. And these were a list of the four most important points by the Ming Dynasty author, Gao Wu. And then later authors also added two more points, which made the six command points. But what Gao Wu thought about this point is that this point was very important for treating disorders of the head and nape. So now let's look at the location of this point. This point is 1.5 sun proximal to the transverse wrist crease. So once again, here's the transverse wrist crease, and we've got to go 1.5 sun proximal. And then it's proximal to the styloid process of the radius. And that's over here. Between the tendons of the brachioradialis and the abductor pollicis longus. So if we look at this image over here, this image shows the muscles of the forearm. So you can see here is the brachioradialis muscle going down here. And then this is the abductor pollicis longa muscle over here. And then this point is between, so it will be located in this region. And then finally, this point also has a simple way of locating the point. And this is done by interlocking the webbing of the fingers. So what you're going to do is you're going to ask your patient to hold out their hand like this image over here. And then you're going to take your right hand if you're locating on their left hand. And you're going to interlock the webbing between the index finger and the thumb, between their index finger and thumb, like this image over here. And then you're going to stretch out your index finger. And where it lands is the location of lung 7. But you still need to palpate with the index finger to locate the space between the two tendons. And as we mentioned before, some of the indications that Mada and Yang thought this point could be used for, and some of the indications from Ga Wu, but then there's also further indications relating to what this point's categories are. So the first indications are based on it being a point on the lung meridian, so it can be used for cough, tachypnea, sore throat, and other lung diseases. But then the second and third functions, if you think about this meridian, this meridian does not run anywhere near the head or the teeth or the neck. So how come this point can be used for headache and toothache and then also for stiff neck and facial paralysis? Well, this is down to it being a Lao connecting point, which means that it can treat conditions on the lung meridian, but also problems on the associated meridian, which in this case would be the large intestine meridian. And the large intestine meridian's flow flows up from the arm onto the neck region, going all the way to the nose. And that's why this point can then be used for these kinds of conditions. It can also, because it's a confluent point of the Ren Meridian, be used for conditions affecting the Ren Meridian. And then our needling technique would be an oblique insertion, 0.5 to 0.8 sun towards the elbow. So if we look here at this image, that would be in this direction. So the next point we'll be looking at is Jing Chu, Lung 8. So this is a Jing River and Metal point of the meridian, and it is located one sun above the transverse wrist crease. So this is the transverse wrist crease over here, and we've got to go one sun superior to this wrist crease, and then it's on the radial border of the radial artery. So this here is the radial artery in red, and we've got to be on the radial border, so that's towards this side of the artery. The indications for this point, so it can be used for cough, tachypnea, sore throat, and other lung diseases. It can also be used for wrist pain. Our insertion is our oblique proximal, so in this direction, or a perpendicular insertion, 0.3 to 0.5 sun. 
One thing you've got to be careful here is you've got to be careful of puncturing the radial artery. So can anyone think of any method we could use to help protect the radial artery when we're inserting our needle? So what you're going to do is you're going to use the fingernail pressing insertion. And then you're going to place either the index finger or the thumb of the palpating hand over here, like this. And then you're going to feel to make sure that you can feel the radial artery so that you know you are over it. And then you're going to insert just radial to the finger or, or thumb to ensure that you do not puncture the radial artery. The next point is Lang Nan, known as Tai Yuan. This is the Shu stream, Yuan source, and earth point of the meridian. It's also the influential point of the vessels. So this point is located at the most distal transverse wrist crease over here, and it's on the lateral border of the radial artery, just like Lang 8. And we can use the same method of palpating the radial artery first, and then going just radial to the radial artery. So the indications for this point, this point falls into a number of different categories and this affects its indications. Firstly, it's a Yuan source point. So can anyone remember the function of the Yuan source points? So these are used to treat disorders of the associated Zhang Fu organ with this meridian. So for our case here, the lung meridian, it's used to treat disorders of the lung organ. And then secondly, it's an influential point of the vessel. So if you remember from the introduction slide, the influential points are points that govern each one of their specific substances. This point is the influential point of the vessels, which means it governs any disorder of the vessels. And this is related to its second function in treating pulseless disease. So what is pulseless disease? Well, this is any disorder in which the radial pulse or any other pulse cannot be palpated. Okay, and then let's go through the indications now. So like all other points on this meridian, this point can treat cough and tachypnea, pulseless disease, as we've discussed, and then because of its location, it can treat pain in the wrist and forearm. Our insertion is perpendicular, 0.3 to 0.5 tsun. And remember, yeah, again, we have to be careful to avoid the radial artery using the fingernail insertion technique. Okay, so the next point is UG, lung 10. So this is the shing spring and metal point of the meridian. So let's start with the location. This point is located on the thinner eminence at the midpoint of the shaft of the first metacarpal bone at the junction of the red and white skin. So for this slide, I wanted to try something different. And I want you to try and think where this point is just using these details over here without the image to assist you. As remember, I told you that these images can sometimes be misleading. So you need to be able to know where about the point is just from the theory here. So firstly, you must think, where is the thena eminence? And then which bones on the hand is the metacarpal bone? And finally, you have to know what is the red and white skin and where is this located? So if we bring in the image now, I don't know if this was where about you were thinking, but let's break it down. The thena eminence is this part of the thumb. It's the muscular portion of the thumb over here. And then the midpoint of the shaft of the first metacarpal so the thumb is the first metacarpal, and then we're at the midpoint of the first metacarpal, which is this bone here. And then finally, the junction in the red and white skin. So you can't see that on this image. But what happens is because there's lots of blood vessels on the palm of the hand, the skin on the palm of the hand has a slight red tinge to it. So that's why we say the junction of the red and white skin, because the skin on this portion of the hand has a slight red tinge to it compared to the back portion of the hands. Also to note here yeah, is that the color of your patient's skin will affect this. It might not be red and white skin. It might be red and, and yellow skin or red and brown skin or red and black skin. But it's just the junction between the two different colors of the skin. And then the indications for this point. So this point can be used for cough, hemoptysis, dryness of the throats, aphonia and other lung diseases. It can also be used for infantile malnutrition. Our insertion is perpendicular. 0.5 to 1 sun. And then this is the final point on the meridian, Shaoshang, Lang 11. This is the Jing well and wood point of the meridian. And it is located on the radial border of the thumb. So if you look at the image here, this is the radial aspect. And this is your ulnar aspect. So it's on the radial side, this side over here. 
and then it's 0.1 sun from the corner of the nail. So you go to this corner part here and you've got to go 0.1 sun away in this direction. The indications for this point, it can be used for lung excess syndromes, such as sore throat, epistaxis, or high fever. It can also be used to treat coma or manic depressive disorders. Our needling is oblique insertion, proximally 0.1 sun, or we can prick to bleed in acute and severe cases. And that is the end of the lung size. Next, we'll be looking at the partner meridian of the lung, the large intestine meridian.